it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Right, this one's about finding a nice coffee. Hi guys, welcome to the next video for the elemental and environmental topic. Um, this one is all about photochemical smog. So what we're going to be looking at today is photochemical smog, uh, what causes it, what it is, and then we're also going to be looking at primary and secondary pollutants, which is something you need to know as well. So what I've got here is our little city, all right? So we've got our factories over here, we've got our cars, and um, we've got our city as well where we live, all right? And then we've got our sun shining down brightly from our forest, giving us lots of sunlight, okay? So as we know, uh, because of the Industrial Revolution, the, the way that we burn fossil fuels is greatly impacted upon the world. So what we've got, both in factories and also with combustion engines and cars, is we've provided now enough energy to take a nitrogen molecule, which is normally very unreactive due to its triple bond, and we've given the ability to actually combine with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide. This reaction doesn't normally occur, okay? This is nitro nitrogen, sorry about spelling tonight, I'll get it right, nitrogen monoxide, okay? And this normally doesn't occur except up in the atmosphere with natural lightning strikes or via um, nitrogen fixation through plants because that nitrogen is very, very stable. However, the energy through the combustion engines allows this to occur, all right? So what happens is we've got our cars here and they're giving off nitrogen monoxide all right we've got our factories and they're giving off nitrogen monoxide as well they give off other gases as well okay um, but these are the ones we're going to be focusing on for photochemical smog all right these gases um, which are um, emitted directly into the atmosphere are what we call we're going to get different color for this because it's really important you know this they're called primary pollutants Primary pollutants are those that are emitted directly into the atmosphere through um, the burning of fossil fuels in engines or at factories, okay? They emit um, nitrogen monoxide into the atmosphere, okay? So some of the other things that they emit are what we call vox, okay? Vox are what we call volatile organic compounds, okay? These are basically unburnt hydrocarbons. So when you burn um, your um, engine fuel, all right, you're releasing or you're burning octane, I should say, but you don't burn all of it. So sometimes you release some of that into the atmosphere and that's what we call volatile organic compounds. So they're ones that readily react. So that's another example of a primary pollutant. Now what happens is that in the atmosphere, okay, you can get further reactions occurring. Now these further reactions that occur to produce new chemicals produce what we call secondary pollutants. Okay, so secondary pollutants are those that are formed by reactions in the atmosphere. Okay, so what happens is our nitrogen monoxide is up there. Okay, nitrogen monoxide is up there. We've got oxygen in the atmosphere as well. So what it does is it just reacts with one of the oxygens from an oxygen molecule and we form nitrogen dioxide. Okay, now this is a really, really unique gas. Okay, it's the only one which is actually brown, okay? So this is one of the primary pollutants that's formed in our atmosphere, okay? So what can also happen is that this nitrogen dioxide, all right, can actually break down again as well, and kind of go the backwards reaction. So what can happen is that our nitrogen dioxide can reform nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. But this is a bit different. You're probably not used to seeing oxygen like this, okay? This is what we call a free radical, okay? Peace, man. So this free radical, what it can do is it, it wants to react very, very readily because it's got a free electron on there which because it's not bonded to anything else. So that free electron makes it really, really reactive. So what happens is that free electron or that free radical there, okay, wants to combine. And one of the most common things it combines with is oxygen gas, okay? And that forms ozone. Now, ozone is really, really good higher up in the atmosphere. So up in the stratosphere, okay, ozone is really good because it blocks UV light coming down to the Earth and that helps to protect us. However, in the troposphere, which is the layer of the atmosphere right here where the city is, it's actually a pollutant, okay? And it's actually really, really bad, all right, because it causes respiratory problems. Now, 
you've actually probably already smelt what ozone smells like. If you've ever been near a photocopier, that smell from a photocopier is actually ozone. It's a really, really low concentration though, so it's not going to harm you. All right? But when you have a lot of cars and a lot of factories and everything like that, you can get a lot of this reaction occurring to produce ozone. Okay? So some of these secondary pollutants that we form in the atmosphere via reactions are ozone and nitrogen dioxide. Okay? Now what can happen, the third reaction um, to produce a third, prime, a third secondary pollutant all right, is this one. So we've got our oxygen, sorry, our ozone here now, and we've got our nitrogen dioxide as well. Okay? So what happens is, remember we've got our volatile organic compounds, which are unreacted um, organic molecules, so our unburnt hydrocarbons. What happens is they combine with ozone, and they combine with nitrogen dioxide, and they form something called PANS. Okay? Now PANS, you don't have to be able to balance this equation or anything like that, but PANS are what we call peroxyacetyl nitrates. Okay? And these are also very, very dangerous. These are also pollutants and also respiratory irritants as well. So we really don't want any of these forming. Now the good thing is that um, most of the time we don't get this sort of thing occurring. Okay? Because most of the time the earth follows what it was meant to do. All right? So what I mean by this, this is where we actually start to get our photochemical smog occurring. Okay? So photochemical smog, if we actually break it down, photochemical okay, comes from two words. So this means photo meaning light. Okay? And so chemical. So it's a chemical reaction that comes about in the presence of light. Okay? And then we've got smog. Smog is a combination of smoke and fog. Okay? So when we're talking about smoke, we're talking about pollutants. So fine particles. Okay? Fine particles given off as pollution. With fog, it's fine water droplets. Okay? So we're actually going really, really finely dispersed water droplets that aren't actually heavy enough to condense together to form droplets. They're really fine. So when we have that combination of pollutants with fog, all right, and um, chemical reactions that can be catalyzed by the presence of light, that's where we get our photochemical smog. So what happens is that we've got all these reactions occurring down here where we're releasing our primary pollutants like nitrogen monoxide into the atmosphere. Now what happens is that if you weren't aware, the temperature of the earth, all right, so from here up to here, normally what happens is the temperature decreases. Which makes sense, because the um, light from the sun comes down to the earth, it's absorbed and it's re-radiated. So you've got all these things down the bottom re-radiating heat, and so lots of re-radiated heat here, but you know that the further you get away from something, the less heat you feel, so the temperature decreases, all right? It loses its impact as it travels its way up, okay? However, what can happen is that occasionally you'll get something called a temperature inversion. Okay? And a temperature inversion is key to photochemical smog. All right? So what happens is that we've got our normal atmosphere here and normally we have our temperature decreasing. But what happens in a temperature inversion is you get this blanket okay, of warmer air. So this blanket of warm air traps this colder air underneath. All right? So then we've got colder air underneath here. And so what happens is our air no longer um, goes around and mixes, so our air inside just stays inside and keeps circulating inside. So we no longer have the normal dispersion all right, of our air, or our, of um, so our, normally gases want to disperse, take as much space as possible. But because we've got this warmer air of a temperature inversion, it traps this cold air underneath and just keeps it cycling. So what happens is our pollutants start to build up. So we start to put up our nitrogen monoxide. That nitrogen monoxide reacts to form nitrogen dioxide. All right, and you remember that that's brown. So what happens is that we start to build up a brown haze. So quite often you'll see over Adelaide some mornings, you'll actually see a brown haze over, and it's quite a distinct layer close down to the earth. Uh, that's because we've got this warmer temperature inversion blanket up the top, trapping all the air underneath. All right? The presence of mountains is really good for creating a temperature inversion as well. And we've got the, obviously the Adelaide Hills, which help to trap the air as well. So we get this build-up of nitrogen dioxide. If this air keeps circulating and isn't broken up, 
okay? We then form our ozone and our pans as well. So we start to build these up, okay? Now, this temperature inversion is key. The other real key that we need is no wind, okay? No wind means that we don't actually start to get this air to mix together. Because if you get wind happening, what happens is it starts to combine this all together. It breaks up your temperature inversion. You no longer have your air circulating here in the middle. And so you don't get this buildup of pollutants. Okay? So if you have a temperature inversion and no wind, you allow nitrogen monoxide to form in greater concentrations. That allows your nitrogen dioxide to form, which can form your ozone and your peroxyacetyl nitrates as well. Okay? Now, what you'll notice in Adelaide is that you'll see photochemical smog most commonly between about 6 and 9 a.m. Okay, and about 4 and 6 p.m. Okay, now hopefully you realise that this is peak hour traffic. It's when you've got the most cars on the road, so you've got the most amount of nitrogen monoxide being emitted into the atmosphere. Okay, so key things for photochemical smog. Okay, you need pollution. All right, which we've got here. All right, you need a temperature inversion, which we've got here. You need no wind, which is what we've got here, and you need sunlight, because each of these, remember the nitrogen dioxide breaks down in the presence of sunlight to form ozone, okay, through those secondary reactions to form those secondary pollutants. So those are the key things that you need. Now, what happens is um, obviously we build up all these pollutants and it's gonna be really bad for us. So we wanna try and prevent these secondary pollutants being produced in the atmosphere, because these are the ones, ozone and pans, which are the real issue, okay? So what we can do, if you think about it, is if we stop the production of our nitrogen monoxide, we're gonna stop the production of our nitrogen dioxide, which is in turn gonna stop this production. So really we wanna focus on this. So car manufacturers think, thought about this, and this is what they came up with. So car manufacturers quickly realized that the pollution that was coming out of their car engines was not good for us. Okay, so normally when you um, get some burning in a combustion engine, you're burning octane. Okay, and normally what you get is incomplete combustion. So when you combine oxygen in the air with um, your octane in your fuel, what you're getting is some carbon dioxide, but you're also getting carbon monoxide, and you're also getting nitrogen monoxide as well. Okay, that's formed as a separate reaction. Okay, through the um, high energy that's inside your combustion engine. But these are really the two that we have a problem with. Okay? Nitrogen monoxide we know is a problem because it um, forms photochemical smog and those respiratory irritants we talked about. Carbon monoxide is what's called an asphyxian. And I've got to get that spelling wrong, sorry. An asphyxian. An asphyxian is something that stops um, oxygen being able to be absorbed into your bloodstream. Okay? So people who die from carbon monoxide poisoning are from blue. Um, because they haven't got the oxygen into their bodies from oxyhemoglobin, which is red in colour. Alright, so that's not good. We want to get rid of that because it stops us from breathing properly as well. So what they did was they installed catalytic converters. Now, catalytic converters use a catalyst. All right, it's normally a nickel palladium or platinum or something like that. Um, inside the engine. So what they have is they have the car engine. All right, so I'm just going to draw a really simple diagram here. So you've got your engine, all right, here, all right, and you've got your exhaust over here, which is where all your pollution comes out, and there's a pipe that goes all the way through. All right, what they do is they will stick your catalytic converter in the middle because they want to get these harmful pollutants before they exit your car. So it's got a honeycomb structure, which helps to increase the surface area, which increases the rate of a reaction. Okay, and what happens is it takes this carbon monoxide and this nitrogen monoxide and it converts it into nitrogen gas plus carbon dioxide. So to balance it up, you need to do that. Okay, and that's really, really good because nitrogen, we know, is really, really harmless. Okay, we know it makes up 78% of our air. Okay, so nitrogen we're not going to worry about. Carbon dioxide, not ideal. Okay. We know it contributes to the greenhouse effect. However, that is far less dangerous to us than the carbon monoxide or nitrogen monoxide, which will produce photochemical smog. Okay? 
One of the problems in developing countries in particular is they don't have as strict laws as we do around car manufacture and car maintenance. And so what a lot of people do is they actually rip out the catalytic converter because it actually improves your fuel performance a little bit by not having it in there. So they get more litres, um, sorry, more kilometres per litre out of their tank, but obviously it allows this photochemical smog to come up, so that's why there's a lot of respiratory pollution problems. And obviously when you get really overly um, or highly populated countries like China, for example, you see a lot of people anytime you see them, they're always wearing a face mask if they're riding around in their bicycle because there's just simply so much pollution that you can't stop some of this nitrogen monoxide forming and then the photochemical smog forming as well. So my advice as you go back over this video, you make sure you understand what primary and secondary pollutants are. So primary pollutants are those emitted directly into the atmosphere like nitrogen monoxide or carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Okay? Secondary pollutants are those formed by reactions in the atmosphere, such as nitrogen dioxide, ozone or peroxyacetyl nitrates. I suggest you understand the conditions needed for um, photochemical smog. So we need no wind, a temperature inversion, we need presence of sunlight and we need pollution. So they're the four things we need. Right? Make sure you understand those equations and you can write those equations and then make sure you can do the one for catalytic converters. So I know this is fairly involved for this video. You're going to need to watch it a couple of times. Make sure you've got it down. Thanks, guys. See you later.